everyone, welcome to the Oaklords YouTube channel. In today's embroidery tutorial, we're going to be doing something that is very, very common for people who use embroidery machines to make and sell items. Up until this point, we've done a lot of like in the hoop projects, we've done some hats, but embroidering on clothes is one of the best ways to have a successful embroidery business, especially if you have one of those multi-needle machines. So today, we're gonna go through how to embroider on these big chunky sweaters. Now, hopefully, in your neck of the woods, it's getting a little warmer. I know a lot of us have been very cold over the last few weeks, but hopefully it's warming up. So I'm a little late, as always, on this tutorial, but I wanted to go over how to make these sweaters. I ordered these sweaters off of S&S. &S. I will have a link for them down in the description. Everything you see here, there will be a link for it but I ordered some of these very comfy, chunky, fluffy sweaters that you just wanna take a nap on, and I wanted to figure out how to embroider on it. Is it too chunky for us to embroider on? Can we do it? Obviously, we did it. So, as you can see on this side right here, I have this small little emblem, and I embroidered the year on it. This is an applique. I did another sweater also with an applique, and you can see on this one, I used some fun monograms and it says boss on it. It's very, very cute, very sweet. You could do this on adult clothes. You could do it on kids' clothes. You can do a lot. So in today's tutorial, we're gonna be going over how to do this, how to embroider on the upper left chest of a chunky, chunky sweater. Now, to keep it as simple as possible, we're not gonna be doing applique today. If you are interested in us doing another tutorial on the same sweater with an applique design, just leave a comment down below and we'll do that. Maybe maybe we could do like a really big applique on the chest, like for a kid's sweater or something like that. I think that would be really cute. But today's tutorial, we're just gonna be doing fonts. I just kinda wanna run through the very bare nitty gritty of how I do embroidery on a chunky sweater like this. Because you can apply this technique to other blankets, hats, other things that have a really fluffy texture to it. But since we are going to be embroidering on a shirt, we're gonna use a tool that Hoopmaster sent me that is so helpful. So first we're gonna be using the five and a half inch Mighty Hoop. This is going to be the perfect size for your shirts, your onesies, all of that. And next, we're gonna be using this big guy here. This is a hooping station, and the way this works, I'll show you, I'll give you a brief overview. We're not gonna really dive into all of the details of this, but I do wanna show you how I'm using this for the shirt. I'm still very, very new at this, but it is really neat how they have this all set up so that you can just easily pop in what you need, put your shirt on, hoop it, and go. You're done. It's so fast, so easy. You don't have to worry about marking any centers. Since I'm brand new to embroidery, I actually have never done that. I've never marked the center of a shirt and then measured from the collar. I've never done anything like that. So this is great, especially for you beginners out there. If you just don't want to have to kind of learn all of that, you just want to plug and play, get the shirt on, hoop it, embroider it. That's what we're going to do today. So if you're new to the Oak Lords YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Anything at all you want to say, leave them down in the comment section. Listen, I am no embroidery expert. I am still very, very new at this, but I am loving it. I am loving it. I love this multi-needle machine. Thank you so much, Rakoma, for allowing me to use this for a few months. It's been so much fun. If you do have more experience, in embroidering items like this, please leave a comment down below, giving us some tips. If I'm doing something wrong, let me know. Put it in the comments down below. I love learning from all of your advice in the comment section. You can also shoot me an email. I'm jessicaoaklerts.com. Okay, we can do this. Let's get started. Okay, so let's go over the big tools first. Like I said, we're using the five and a half inch square Mighty Hoop. This is a nice small size. It's perfect for embroidering these smaller areas on, you know, the upper left or right corners of a polo or a sweatshirt, a t-shirt, whatever you want. If we were making like a nice big design in the center of the shirt, we'd want to use a bigger hoop. For today's tutorial, this is going to be great. Okay, next we have this hooping station. I'm going to try to get as much of it in the shot as possible. Don't worry, once we go over using it, I will change the camera so you can see it a little bit better. But this hooping station actually has two pieces to it. You have this main body right here that has the left side, the right side of the chest. These letters up here are for where the collar should be. Now this is not gonna completely apply to us today since our collar is very high, but then you have all these numbers in the center and on the sides. Now I'll have a link down below for this, but Hoopmaster does have a kind of beginner adjustment on how everything should lay. So for today's tutorial, for a woman's size small, 
sweater, we, on the left side, we would want to center this piece right here. It goes in upside down and it has a little circle here. That circle would be centered over the number 11 on the left side. If you want to do the right side, you would go, do it over the number 11 on the right side. Now you can always adjust this, but they do give you a nice starting point on where everything should kind of line up so that you just stick your shirt on it, hoop it, super easy. Like I, I'll show you how we do it, don't worry. All right, here's some of the other things we're using today. For the back of the sweater, so the inner facing that's gonna hold it in place in the hoop, I am using a mesh cutaway. There's a lot of different stabilizer options out there. I, I gotta be honest, it can be very overwhelming. This is something I had on hand for other projects. It's very sturdy, it's not a tearaway. I was told by many of you do not use tearaway on any clothing items. So it is a cutaway and it is a mesh cutaway. So it makes it actually very easy to cut and clean up, I'll show you. For the top of the design, I will be using a knockdown stitch, which we'll go over a little bit more. And after I do the knocks down stitch, I'm gonna use some aqua top. Now this is just gonna help those stitches really pop and not sink into the sweater. I have seen many of you give advice saying you could use one or the other. You could use a knock down stitch, no aqua top, or no knock down stitch and just use aqua top. Whatever you prefer, if you have a preference, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear it, but for me, I'm using both. The thread I'm using is Madeira 40 weight and then a nice little pair of snips. Since I'm not doing applique today, I don't need all the applique tools. If you did wanna do applique, I do suggest you pre-wash whatever fabric you're using with your applique. So here is the sweater I'm using today. This is the brand J America. It's a woman's sweater, size small. I will have a link for this sweater down below. I do really like it. I have not washed it yet, so I'm not sure if it shrinks or anything. I can't really suggest if this is like the end all squishy sweater, but it is very, very nice coming right out of the package. So I wanna show you on a previous sweater I did here. I don't know if you can see, but here I have applique and a knockdown stitch. So if you're doing this, this is, this is where I kind of got a little confused because if you're doing applique and a knockdown stitch, do you use aqua top? Here's what I did, knock down first, and you're gonna be able to do that in whatever type of software you're using. If you're doing like a monogram or a name here, you're gonna wanna use some software. Now I love Chroma Lux, it's fantastic. It has a little button, you just click this and add knock down, makes it very, very easy. But I added the knock down stitch, that goes first. And then what it's gonna do in an applique design is it's gonna do all the stitches to trace and then pin down all of your fabric. After it does all that, then it's gonna do satin stitching. So what I do is I get all the fabric attached, I cut it all down, and then before it does the last however many steps of all satin stitching, I put the aqua top on. So like I said, if you're interested in seeing how we do applique on one of these squishy sweaters, let me know down in the comment section. All right, I raised the camera up pretty high, so hopefully you can see everything we're doing here. So here's my base of my Hoopmaster. This thing is so cool. So on their website, which I will have linked down below, it says if I wanted to add a design on a woman's size shirt, I wanna use the number 11 on whichever side I want. So for me, I want it on the left side. So I want the number 11, that's my number right there. It also says I wanna use the letter C here for the collar. However, our collar is gonna be all the way up here, so I'm not focused on that today. So I'm gonna take my little hooping station here and I turn it upside down, just like this. I know it looks kind of like an intimidating contraption, and it, there is a lot you can do with it, and that is intimidating, but we're gonna start with one thing at a time. So now, I feel like I'm like on a Ouija board or something, but now I'm just going to use the circle here to find the number 11. There we go. And just pop this in. There are little, I'll show you. There are these little pegs here. And these little pegs fit into the appropriate holes. There's little holes everywhere. It's very fun. So 11, there we go. Now that's in place. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our bottom hoop. So that's like the thinner one. And we're going to lay it so that we don't have any of the stickers up and see how we have the little notch here. That's gonna go down and it's just gonna tuck in. I mean, it's like a puzzle piece, just like that. Easy peasy. So now that is in place, ready to go. It's not easy to get out, but you could, you know, lift it up, pull it out just like that. Now we're going to flip up these magnetic snaps up here and flip down this magnetic panel down here, okay? So it's all flipped up. Now I'm gonna grab my cutaway mesh 
and I'm just gonna lay this over my blue bottom hoop and it's gonna cover these magnets right here. There's four of them. And then one at a time, I'm just gonna lay down my snaps. And this is gonna allow us to get the stabilizer nice and taut. So you can pick it up, move it around if you need to, pull it down. This doesn't require a lot of work, guys. Don't overthink this. Okay, so now we have the bottom hoop, we have our mesh cutaway, and it's all held in place just like that. Now it's the fun part. We're gonna grab our sweater. I'm gonna unzip my sweater since it has a zipper top up here. And we wanna dress our hoop. We wanna put our sweater on our hoop. So open up the bottom of your sweater and pull it over the top of your station, just like this. And this sweater is gonna go underneath these plastic pegs that are kinda of like, wee, look at me. The sweater goes underneath it, but over your cutaway. So we're just gonna pull it down, just tug, 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 tug. Now what I do is I use this zipper here to line up my zipper with this straight mark at the top of my station just like that. Since I'm not using, you know, the collar reference because my collar is so high, I'm just lining it up like that and then I'm tugging it down. Now what I'm checking is that my seams on the top of my sweater are running along the top edge of my station so they're not like all the way tucked down here, you know, you wanna get this as straight as possible. So just tug it down, push it, there we go. Tug, 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 check your zipper, Make sure, see mine is a little bit off to the right, so I'm gonna scooch it over. And we're just trying to get this as centered as possible, as straight as possible. All right, so once you feel like it's all laid out nice and taut and good to go, grab your top hoop. And your top hoop has these little bolts on the back of it for the screws. You're just gonna slide those right into these grooves on these plastic tabbed wings. So we just slide those bolts into these little wing tags. So you see how this is like flying free now, right? And it's pretty locked in there. It's not gonna fall off really easily. So have every, just double check everything's adjusted. You can always undo this if you need to and redo it, it's no big deal. Okay, and then once you're ready, all you have to do is push down like that and now it's hooped. Isn't that crazy? I love that. So I'm gonna pull this down a little bit. Now we can just pull this out of its groove. Like that gently. Pull the whole thing off your station. And now you can check your hoop. And there you go. Isn't that cute? Should be all nice and straight, nice and taut. And look on the back, this should be nice and firm. Yeah, it looks great. Okay, so now we can go add this to our machine and let's talk about our design that we're gonna be doing today. Okay, so here's my design for today. We will talk more about why I chose this design at the end of the video. But I wanted just to mention, since we're using the five and a half inch Mighty Hoop, on the Rakoma EM1010, we wanna use the Hoop C. That's gonna be perfect for us. So here's our design in here. You can kind of see the background. There's a knockdown stitch, and then I have the numbers, and then my name. This is a very easy thing to stitch out. Now, when you're inserting your hoop into your machine, if you don't have this really big hole up top, you're gonna wanna insert it upside down so that the hole on the bottom of the shirt goes over the arm of your machine. Since I have this nice big opening with that zipper, I can actually insert it just like this. But if you do have to insert it upside down, just make sure you rotate the image on your embroidery machine so that it's upside down or else then you know your 36 is gonna be upside down, like 90E or something, I don't know. So there we go, I'm just gonna insert that. And now I'm going to reach around underneath it and just make sure the arm is right up against the back of my fabric and that none of the other sweater is hanging in there anywhere. So you can see my sweater just hangs down just like that and that's how I'm going to leave it as it embroiders on that one little spot. So the first thing we're gonna do is trace this out and then make sure that this needle, needle number one, is centered on the very center of our hoop just to make sure, you know, nothing goes any which way. So when I trace this out, it goes over the corners right here, but that doesn't mean my design actually does. So I'm going to trace this out using this button right here, which is actually just gonna trace around the entire image that I'm using. So not all the way around 
just around the area that we'll be stitching. So I'm gonna be honest, that gets just a little too close to the hoop for my comfort. I know that like if my mom was using this today, she'd say it's fine, it doesn't hit it. I'm a little too uncomfortable with it. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna get out of embroidery status. We're gonna go to design set. And we're gonna resize this down. I'm just gonna take it down, instead of 100%, I'm gonna take it down to 90%. I'm gonna reduce it by 10%. So we wanna do the X axis and the Y axis, or else you're just gonna have something really skinny or really short. Clear, 90. All right, so that just reduced it by 10%. Now let's trace it out and see how that works. All right, that looks much, much better. Now you don't wanna reduce your size of your, your designs too much on the machine. 10% I found has been fine. I probably wouldn't go more than 20% though. So now I'm selecting all my colors for today. There's only one time I want the machine to stop and that's after the knockdown stitch. So I'm gonna run the knockdown stitch with nothing on top of my fabric. But after it's done with that knockdown stitch, then I wanna put a piece of aqua top on top of it and then let the rest of the stitching go. So since I'm only stopping it once, instead of doing automatic manual, which I do a lot on my channel, I'm gonna keep it at automatic, automatic. It's gonna stop after it's done with the knockdown stitch. Then I can add the aqua top and then it's just gonna finish on its own. Okay, now I know you don't need to use the aqua top or the wash away on top of the knockdown. But, you know, I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> I'm just gonna do it because I think it looks nice and I, you know, I haven't done it the other way so I can't really compare it, but we're just gonna do it. Why not? Let's just do all the things. All right, so now I'm gonna let the machine just run. It's gonna finish the entire design and I'm gonna probably go have a coffee. There you go, once you're all done with the stitching, let's just take it out of the hoop and clean it up and we're done. All right, here we go, let's just take this out of the hoop. Don't forget to take out the back as well. And now for the back, this is not a tear away, which you're not supposed to use a tear away, I was told that. So here I just have some scissors. It's a very, very soft interfacing. So it cuts very, very easily. You don't really have to worry about cutting and then accidentally cutting your sweater. You can kind of just glide the blades around your design. Don't worry about getting it right up against the stitching. It's okay if it's a little bit bigger, but it's very soft, which is something that's important to me if I'm doing clothing. I don't want, you know, like that paper-like stiff cutaway. I want something that's gonna feel good against the skin. And this mesh is just perfect. So you can see I'm not really getting into all of the nooks and crannies. I'm just going around, trying not to cut the sweater. Okay, once the back is good, let's flip it out and look at the front. Okay, here we go. So now we can just pull off most of this aqua top. There you go, it's pretty easy to come off. And I think this looks great. I could have adjusted the knockdown so that it like knocked down inside of the three here, but I think it's okay. I kind of like that poofiness there. So any of the aqua top you couldn't get off, just grab a spray bottle, just get it wet. So this is like a misting spray bottle that I really like. Grab a towel and then just rub it. And all of that aqua top will come off. So no worries at all, it's not gonna ruin the garment or the design or anything like that. Very easy. 
And look how cute that is. Isn't that great? I love that. All right, what do you think? Isn't this adorable? I love this. And you can see it's perfectly centered. It's in the best spot. It's straight, it's not crooked. It was very, very easy to put together. And I know some of you are gonna ask, okay, 36, Jessica, is that like your sports team number? <laughs> no, no, I don't play the sports. <laughs> 36, my birthday is coming up in April and I will be turning 36. And I was thinking how we always make those like little cute t-shirts when you know our baby is 18 months or two years and then we put their name and their age. Well, you know what, 36? is kind of an accomplishment. This was a challenging number to get to, so I'm going to celebrate that by wearing my own little cute shirt with my age on it and my name, so people can congratulate me for making it this far. Thank you. <laughs> so these sweaters are so much fun to make. They're so much fun to make. I'm not gonna tell you how many of these I purchased. I'm not gonna tell you how many sweaters I purchased, but let's just say every single person in my family will be rocking one of these sweaters in the winter coming up. We're in Florida here. It's getting into March and April. It's gonna be too warm to wear these, but maybe I'll just blast the AC at the house just to make everybody wear them for a little bit. You're gonna get addicted to these. These things are so fun. So if you're new to embroidery, I hope that this kind of helped. I know that this was very basic, but in my opinion, that's where I start. I'm gonna start basic and cute, but even though, even though this is basic, it's a sweater, with a number and my name on it. This is something that is very desirable on the market. This is something that a lot of people are willing to spend a good amount of money on for their family. Think about people taking trips. For example, think about people taking a trip to a very magical place and they want matching you know, sweaters with the year and their family name and it's like a souvenir from that vacation. There's a lot you can do with these. If you have a business, this is a fantastic way to bring in income that is quick and cost effective. These sweaters don't cost a whole lot. The thread is very inexpensive. If you're financing a machine like that, these types of items are going to make it all worth it. Trust me, trust me. If you make handmade goods, an embroidery machine is, it can be a very big upfront cost, but it will help your business tremendously. I, I can tell you that from experience, personal experience. So I hope you love making these sweaters as much as I do. If you do and you post them on social media, please make sure you tag me. I'm at Oaklerroots. You can also use the hashtag, hashtag Oaklerroots Toots. I'll be checking those out every single day. I hope you have a fantastic day. Have a great weekend. Get out there and make something. Bye.